Over the centuries, philosophers have debated some of the most fundamental questions of our existence and examined those themes as they've appeared in various works of art. These philosophical themes appear even today in our modern movies, and they're still discussed by philosophers. Here with us now is Chris Coy of the Ball State Philosophy Club. Welcome to The Real Deal, Chris. Thank you. As a general overview, what is philosophy? Well, there's four main, I guess, fields in philosophy. Um, the first being epistemology, which is more of a study of knowledge, what we know, what we can know. Um, the, another would be metaphysics, which is the study of really what exists, um, what we can know it exists, how we relate to it, all of those types of things. There's ethics, which everybody's pretty familiar with, is uh, what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad, um, how do we tell people what's right and wrong, um, and how do we make them do the right or the wrong, I guess, in some situations. And uh, there's also philosophy of language and logic, which is more of a study of uh, how our language or how we talk about these other types of philosophy and how they interact. Which of those would you say appears most often in cinema? Uh, I would say metaphysics um, appears most often in cinema. You have a lot of time travel, you have a lot of um, different worlds existing, fake worlds existing, things like that. But I think most prominent in uh, what cinema does for philosophy would be epistemology or um, different ideas of knowledge. And how does media affect philosophy or vice versa? Well. There is a couple arguments going on actually right now on this topic. Um, the main idea is that media in general, movies, TV, internet, all of these things have given us this wealth of knowledge um, and easy access to it and we can exchange ideas quickly. And so a lot of people are arguing that this gives us a jump start or more of a quicker move to higher levels of knowledge. Though some people have arguments against that, for instance, we spend a lot of time watching previews or um, quick snapshots here and there, commercials, things like that, and we're only getting the real pertinent material and we're getting it quick. So we learn to quick read, we learn to just look at things quickly and examine it and run on. And a lot of people are questioning whether or not that allows us the time to sit down and really think um, deep about these, these issues um, as they come higher and higher down the chain, I guess. Right. Do you feel that philosophy is generally accurately portrayed in media? Um, philosophy is oftentimes accurately portrayed, but then twisted with drama, um, if that makes any sense. Uh, there's a lot of metaphysical or epistemological arguments that are real quickly portrayed in movies that seem like, oh, this is a great question. We need to really solve this. And then it seems a lot of times like the drama or the sense that you need to make it enjoyable for the audience mm -hmm. can really take away from the stance or the philosophical movement that it's trying to represent. Which philosophical questions are good for movies to investigate? Well, um, like I said earlier, the time travel one turns up a lot and it, it, it's an interesting topic. A lot of people like to talk about it, um, different ideas of time, different ideas of how we can travel in it. Um, it's a metaphysical question, but it's a, one that can quickly turn sour. Um, a lot of the movies that we've seen portray time, such as Terminator, um, or actually um, one of the recent ones called Time Travel, um, it just it inaccurately portrays it. It sets up a paradox um, that it just can't, it can't be true. So, when you, when you change it quickly to that drama or you just change it quickly to something that can't work, it seems to really misrepresent what people would understand about time or things of that nature. Do you feel that the media helps to popularize philosophy or hinders it? Well, the media does a lot of different things with philosophy. Um, one of the major ones is it allows people to get an opinion out that wouldn't normally get it out. And uh, a lot of times that can negatively or positively affect the situation. Uh, so how does philosophy expand cultures and help people's stereotypes? Um, a lot of what philosophy and cinema will do is it allows um, a, a, a less dominant culture to voice their opinion to a larger group of people. And it really gets um, different types of information out there, information that would help people formulate opinions and or further philosophical stances um, one of the ones that 
I find most prominent was the Hotel Rwanda movie that came out. And it really showed um, a situation that was real and it was happening. And a lot of people didn't know about it. And when you allow cinema, which gets to a ton of different people, um, and this is partly because of the drama, to portray that truth, it gives these people the knowledge they need to go back and fight or further a social movement. Do you feel that philosophical movies help also give us a perspective on history? Um, yeah, a lot of times they can. Um, and again, it's taking the good with the bad, I guess. A lot of times they can distort or you can have biases in uh, movies. And that's another thing you need to be worried about from a philosophic perspective, is that someone can easily use this form of entertainment to propose a certain bi bias or propaganda. Um, Hitler was huge on using entertainment or movies or television broadcasts to mm -hmm. provide his knowledge, quote unquote, of um, the, the Nazi movement. And so those type of things you need to be careful of in these situations. All right, well, let's discuss some specific movies. Okay. Can you tell me some that are good examples of philosophy? Yeah, um, I guess the most famous that people have dealt with the most is The Matrix. Uh, mm -hmm. The Matrix was a rather uh, famous philosophic one. It had um, both metaphysical and epistemological type questions in it. You know, what is out there? Are we all just in a dream state right now? Um, is there something beyond that? Um, and it also had epistemological questions as, you know, how do we know what's out there? Um, do we get feelings about it? Um, does someone have to bring us into a position where we can understand it? Um, so that's probably the most famous of the, uh, the examples out there now today. Some of my favorites, I guess, would be um, Donnie Darko. Mm -hmm. as a movie that was out a while back. It, it I think, accurately portrays um, d determinism, which is the idea that even though this guy went back in time or he could understand what was going to happen, um, it was going to happen regardless, no matter what he tried to stop it, no matter what he tried to understand about it, um, which I thought was rather interesting coming from a um, culture or cinema. Um, some other good ones out there, uh, like I said, Hotel Rwanda, I thought, while it wasn't a philosophical um, movie, it really showed a position that a lot of philosophical people are, are backing or behinding, that we need to really act in certain um, areas where people are being oppressed or um, even murdered, uh, m mass murdered or even just murdered in the fact that they're not allowed to have their social movement represented. Well, can you name for me some misleading movies? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I could even say how The <coughs> Matrix w um, was a little misleading in the fact that a lot of the dreamlike states that they were proposing with its particular quirks in it um, or areas where it just didn't go right or wrong um, don't seem to be accurate. Um, it seems as though if things were really in a dreamlike state, that it would be in a specific dreamlike state and nothing else would go wrong with it. And they don't really follow up on this when they're writing the script, so they don't really care, I guess, um, what people are going to get from this. But, you know, you get a lot of, for instance, intro students yeah. coming into philosophy thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Well, The Matrix definitely raised interest in philosophy. Yes, yes, it actually movies. did. Um, well, thank you so much for your time tonight, Chris. Thank you.